Hello and welcome to Money Sense. My name is John and this is the channel where I talk about all things related to finance to help you build your wealth. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've hit a little bit of a rough patch. You see, when I was in my 20s, I developed this heart arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation. Basically what it is, is the top part of the heart beats really fast and the bottom beats really slow and your blood pressure crashes. It's very uncomfortable. In fact, I had to be hospitalized six or seven times because of this. And also it can lead to a stroke because blood pools in the heart and that can solidify, go right to the brain and that's your last day on earth. Now, the other arrhythmia that I have is preventricular contractions. This is when the bottom part of the heart beats prematurely than the top. And this also leads to a very uncomfortable situation, a blood pressure drop, and you really can't do much of anything until they get your heart back to a normal sinus rhythm. Now, I'm a runner, a long distance runner with about 1200 miles a year under my belt. So my heart structure and the arteries are all great, but I have this electrical problem. Well, after a 12 year hiatus, it came back about two weeks ago. And so I've been getting all sorts of tests by a cardiologist. I've had to wear this heart monitor for the last few days and you can't take a shower. I've had MRIs done of my heart and I have to go back to the cardiologist tomorrow. Now, all of this activity over the last two weeks made me realize there are four things I don't have current that I should in the case of A, my untimely death, and B, I were to become comatose and unable to communicate to my loved ones. And these four things are really important and they have nothing to do with a will or trust. I already have those in place and I'm sure many of you do as well. So I'm hoping this video will help you think about these things because while death is not a fun topic, it happens and certainly becoming comatose happens as well. And this would take a lot of stress off our loved ones if we have these things already planned out and taken care of. So let's get right into it. Okay, welcome back to Money Sense. First, a shout out to my subscribers. I really appreciate every one of you for subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. This is something I do strictly as a hobby to help people with their wealth and finance and what's happening in the economy. For my day job, I work in biotech. So again, that's all I do this for. And also, I wanna share a little bit about the heart because it's kind of amazing in terms of this machine that we have in our chest. First of all, the heart beats about 115 to 120,000 times per day and pumps about 2,000 gallons of blood, which is just astounding in a 24-hour period. The other thing it does is it pumps that blood through about 60,000 miles of blood vessels in the average adult. Think about that for a moment, that your body has about 60,000 miles of blood vessels that the heart is pushing all that blood through. So it's quite an amazing device, and when it's not working properly, it really can uh, set you back emotionally, and physically. And so when that happened to me over the last couple of weeks, it made me realize that there are four things I need to get tidied up and current. And the first one is a contact list. This is essentially a document that lists out all of the things that you deal with, whether it's your car insurance company, your electric bill and the account numbers, your cable bill, your phone bill, your uh, place of work or school, your landlord's number and address, every single thing that you connect to in your daily living should be in this list. If you work for an employer with a 401k, that 401k contact information should be in there. Your bank contact info, the license plate number of your car, your driver's license information, everything about you should be in this contact list, along with key people that should be contacted in the event you became comatose or at the worst, uh, died unexpectedly. And I put a contact list together about two years ago. It's a Word document, but I haven't updated it since uh, 2018 and it's out of date. There's lots of things in there that no longer are applicable. And so this is something that you should update 
probably twice a year, this contact uh, document. The second thing that's very important is a repository of all of your passwords where someone would know where it is. It could be a Word document, it could be an encrypted device that stores all the passwords. But these are really important because you have passwords for everything. I have about 72 different passwords, ranging from my Facebook account to my cell phone to my TD Ameritrade equity account, all across the board. Now, who would know how to get into those accounts if they needed to in case I was, like I said, comatose or I died? Number three is a financial summary. We should have all of our financial information updated every six months in some sort of spreadsheet or Word document or other financial application where someone would know where it is. Knowing the balances on your credit cards or loans that you have or bank balances, stock that you own. If you became comatose or died unexpectedly with a trade still active, say in your E-Trade account or Robinhood account, who knows what's there? These are really important questions you have to think about, like I'm thinking about as a result of my health issue over the last two weeks. So getting all of your financial assets in one document, one place, and making sure that there's a person out there, again, whether it's your durable power of attorney or a family member or a trusted friend, knows where it is. Now the fourth one is probably in some ways the most important, and that is the entire digital repository of your life. If you think about all the memorialized artifacts that we generate, whether it be photographs, videos, uh, PDF files, uh, Word files, Excel files, all these things are kept in various places, whether they're on our uh, laptops, our desktop computers, our tablets, or even our cell phones, well, all of that information should be centralized into one device, encrypted so it's protected from anyone that could hack into it, but there needs to be a person or persons out there that knows where it is. Because if you were to die unexpectedly or become comatose, that uh, digital uh, repository of your life would be lost if no one knew where it was. And so making sure that that is kept somewhere where it's known is really important. In my will, I have it spelled out where mine is, but as I found out over the last two weeks, I haven't updated the thing in two years. So it's grossly out of date. It doesn't have a lot of my current files. And so although this is a lot of time, it's really important for us to do this. In fact, I'm going to share a resource in the link below of a great book that walks you through how to completely uh, back up your digital life, you might say, and how to archive all these things I've been talking about. But as I found out over the last two weeks when my heart started to develop these arrhythmias, wow, oh my word, I haven't updated my contact list. I haven't updated my financial summary. I haven't updated my password uh, listing. I don't believe someone even knows where it is. And my digital repository hasn't been updated. And the password on my computer isn't known by anyone. I'm like, oh my word. And so that's why it's important to do these things because it helps those who love us and take care of us to have less stress because they can access this information. And so by doing all these things now, it takes that burden off of our loved ones. And I think that that's just really wise. And so with that, I really want to again thank you for watching. If you wouldn't mind just smashing the like button, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. It gets this video into the hands of other people who want to plan ahead and make sure that they have these things, you know, taken care of in case something happens to them medically or, God forbid, an untimely death. And so I will see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching and be well and prosper.